Write-only arguments have closed the loop with ephemeral values in Terraform. Let's explore what they are and how they work. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, nedinthecloud.com, and welcome to another Terraform Tuesday. Today, we are going to get into ephemeral values and write-only arguments. Now, ephemeral values were introduced in Terraform 1.10, but they were missing a key component. Write-only arguments are a new feature in Terraform 1.11, and they help to complete the goals established by ephemeral values. I've already done a whole video on what ephemeral values are and how they work. You can check it out in the, the doobly-doo, but allow me to summarize it here as well. Ephemeral values were created to help address the issue of sensitive values being stored in state and also in plan files. State data holds the attribute values of all data sources and all resources. Some of those attributes might be sensitive data that you'd rather not appear in state. An additional concern is sensitive information found in saved Terraform plan files. Plan files not only contain the entirety of the configuration, but also the planned changes and the variable values used to create the plan. Values that are marked as ephemeral will never be persisted in state or in a plan file. The value is accessed and stored in memory for the period during which it's needed, and then it's flushed out. You can get ephemeral values from input variables, output values, or ephemeral resources, which is a new resource block type. Input variables and output values can be marked as ephemeral using the ephemeral argument and setting it to true. Whereas ephemeral resources are a distinct block type and they have to be implemented by the provider. So how can you use these ephemeral values? When the feature was released in 1.10, the primary use cases were for provider settings and provisioner credentials. That's because the values used for providers and provisioners are not persisted in the plan file or in state. So ephemeral values could be used there. But what about resource arguments? By default, all resource arguments are recorded in the plan and the state. So you couldn't use ephemeral values because that would be a violation of the promise made by ephemeral values. That is, until the introduction of write-only arguments. Write-only arguments are a special type of resource argument that is not persisted in state and is not written to the plan file. You can write a new value to the resource, but you cannot retrieve the current value through state data. That's what makes it write-only. Now, you can't simply mark any argument in the resource as write-only. Instead, a new argument needs to be added to that resource type by the provider to support write-only functionality. For example, version 4.34 of the Azure RM provider includes a write-only argument for the value of a key vault secret and a write-only password argument for several database-related resources like the Azure RM MS SQL Server. As new releases of the provider roll out, additional resources will have write-only arguments added to them. You might be wondering, if Terraform doesn't know the value of the write-only argument, how does it know when that value changes? The answer is that along with the new write-only argument is a new version argument that's used to signal to Terraform that the current value should be overwritten. For instance, in the Azure RM MS SQL Server resource, the write-only password argument is called administrator login password WO for write only. And the version argument is called administrator login password WO version. That seems to be the pattern for all the write only arguments I've seen. The write only argument ends in WO and the corresponding version argument adds version to the end. Why don't we walk through a few examples so you can see these write only arguments in action? I'll start with Azure Key Vault. In this example, I'm deploying an Azure Key Vault, and then I've got two different instances of a Key Vault secret. 
The first sets the value of the secret using the input variable db password regular. The second block is a little bit different. Instead of using the value argument, instead I'm now using the value wo argument. So it's write only. When you use that argument, you also have to include the vault wo version argument. Both of these are set using the single input variable db password ephemeral, which, if I jump over to the variables.tf file, is an object with two keys the value and the version. You don't have to do it this way, but I find it pretty convenient. In the terraform.tf vars file, I am setting both password values the same and using one for the version number of the password. Now let's deploy this and check out the contents of state. I'll pull up the terminal and run a Terraform apply with auto approve. While that's provisioning, I want to point out that you normally wouldn't pass a secret with a terraform.tfvars file. That kind of defeats the purpose. So this is for demonstration purposes only. The way you choose to inject secret data into your configuration should be secure and not something that you're committing to source control. Okay, the deployment completed. So let's take a look at the state data. If I simply run Terraform show and scroll up through the various components, the output will include both key vault secrets, but the stored value is redacted because it's sensitive. Terraform is not going to show that in the terminal. However, I'm going to open the state file directly and look for the normal password. Looking under its entry, sure enough, the value field has our password in plain text. But if I scroll down to the write-only version of the secret, the value field there is null and the version field is set to one. Using the write-only argument means the secret value isn't in my state. That's pretty cool. Now, what if I wanted to update the secret? Back in the tffrs file, I'll change the value for the write-only secret, and then I'll run a Terraform plan. Now, because I didn't change the value of the version, Terraform has no way of knowing that the value of the secret has changed and so it should be updated. Sure enough, we get back a plan with no changes. Now I'm going to update the version to B2 and run a new plan. Since the version has changed, now Terraform knows that it needs to update the value as well. And the plan we get back has one change. So that's how we might get a secret value into Key Vault without storing it in state data. Now what about using the secret that we stored in Key Vault? That's where ephemeral resources come into play. In the directory MS SQL Server, I have an ephemeral block here for a Key Vault secret. The syntax of the block is exactly the same as a Key Vault secret data source, but there's a key distinction. See what I did there? A Key Vault data source would store the value in state data, but the ephemeral resource won't. To use the ephemeral resource, I have an Azure RM MS SQL Server block here using the argument administrator login password wo and wo version. Just like when we created the key vault secret, we need to include a version number here so Terraform knows if it needs to update the login password, since that value is not stored in state. Let's see what happens when I run a plan. Let me kick off the plan and then we can look at what Terraform is doing during the plan. For the inputs to the configuration, I created an input variable that includes the vault ID, the secret name, and the version number, which just happens to be the outputs from the previous configuration. It's very convenient, right? Okay, in the plan, Terraform opens the contents of the ephemeral resource in memory. Then it uses that information with the MS SQL Server object. And once the plan is complete, the ephemeral resource is closed. Terraform will do the same thing during apply, accessing the ephemeral resource, using the value for creation, and closing the resource. Feel free to deploy the configuration yourself if you want to see the resulting state data. You can find the link to this repository in the description. The addition of write-only arguments is absolutely fantastic, and I'm excited to see more resource types implement them. But what if the resource type you want to manage isn't yet supported? There is a solution, the AZ API provider. First, I want to thank my fellow HashiCorp ambassador, Stu Mace, for bringing this to my attention. 
He wrote a whole blog post about it that I highly recommend. The link is down in the description. Essentially, the AZ API provider has added a sensitive body section to the AZ API resource and AZ API update resource. If you want to have a property of a resource be treated as write only, you simply have to move it to the sensitive body section instead of the regular body section. And it really is that simple. Let's take a look at Stu's example. In this configuration, we're wiring up a container group to a log analytics workbook, and we need the shared key of the workbook to do so. The AZ API provider now has the ephemeral resource AZ API resource action, which you can use to retrieve sensitive values. That's what we're doing here with the primary and secondary shared keys for the log analytics workbook. Down in the AZ API resource for the container group, there is a sensitive body section that includes the nested property log analytics workspace key, and it's set to the value of the primary key from the ephemeral resource action. Let's kick off the deployment to show that the contents of the sensitive body aren't written to state. There's a couple nice things about this approach. First off, any property can become a write-only property without needing an update to the provider to support it. Second, there's no write-only version number you have to keep track of, which is kind of nice. The downside is that you now have to use the AZ API provider for that resource. Okay, now that the deployment is complete, we can search for the sensitive body in state and see that it's set to null. Now let's change the configuration to use the secondary key instead. I'll go ahead and make that change, and then I'm going to run a Terraform plan. Jumping ahead a little bit, it tells me that it needs to update the container group in place, but it doesn't actually tell me the exact property that caused the modification. So how does it know that there's even a change? Going back to the state data, there's a private value here, which is pretty clearly a hash. That hash is calculated based on the last contents of the sensitive body. So if the contents change, then the private hash changes, and Terraform knows that it needs to modify the resource. However, it doesn't know which property inside the sensitive body changed, so it can't tell you that. So again, the nice thing is that you don't have to keep track of a version for each sensitive value, but the downside is that you can't tell from the plan which value actually changed. It's probably not a big deal, but I did want to point it out. The introduction of write-only arguments closes the loop on the ideas first introduced by ephemeral values back in Terraform 1.10. Between write-only arguments in Azure RM resources and the sensitive body in AZ API resources, you can now keep your secrets out of Terraform state entirely. And I think that's a good thing. But I'm curious what you think. Are you going to start using ephemeral resources and write-only arguments, or is the juice not worth the squeeze? Let me know in the comments or hit me up on LinkedIn. Until next time, keep calm and Terraform on. Terraform will do the same thing during apply, 